But it is very much an honor for me to be here with you today. Thank you very much for waiting. Thank you, Managing Director Diop, for your kind introduction. And I have to say that in this time of converging global challenges, the work of the Sustainable Banking and Finance Network has never been more important. The COVID pandemic has thrust 100 million new people into extreme poverty and doing years of progress. Shocks like these can affect all of our lives, but especially those of the poor and the most vulnerable. In the same way, climate change is threatening livelihoods, food security and well-being worldwide with disproportionate effects on women and again, the most vulnerable. And the rippling effects of conflict and instability are stretching our collective efforts to respond at a time when we need to work together the most. Over the past 10 years, this network has shown how collaboration can strengthen our response. Developing and sharing best practice, creating policy frameworks, and hands-on technical assistance, this is how we build a financial sector better able to withstand shocks and to support our planet's positive future. Because of this, this network's reach has grown impressively from its 10 founding members in 2012 to 71 institutions today, representing 61 countries and 86% of banking assets in emerging markets. But an essential part of our work remains to be done. 1.5 billion people are still left out of the financial system, including 1 billion that are women. To date, much of our work has focused on the macro level. We know, however, that it is at the micro level of underserved households and small businesses where people face the greatest risks with the fewest tools to manage them. And their fortunes will determine a collective success. So let us embrace this anniversary as an opportunity to address their needs. As the SBFN's International Development Association Task Force has recognized, financial inclusion is key to deepening financial markets and managing ESG opportunities and risks. Financial inclusion offers people on low incomes a chance to build resilience in the face of climate related shocks and to support recovery and adaptation when they occur. In Malawi and Ghana, for example, we see clear evidence that when farmers gain access to formal savings or instruments like weather insurance, not only are they covered against climate shocks, but they're also able to spend more on inputs, cultivate more land and hire more people, leading to increased production. In addition to resilience building and adaptation, there are trillions of dollars of green investment opportunities in emerging markets, from green affordable housing to climate smart agriculture and renewable energy. These opportunities offer new hope at a time when hope can sometimes be quite hard to find. But how can we help households and small businesses to access these opportunities in ways that and help them and help drive the low carbon energy transition. On the supply side, this means going beyond the work of traditional banks or capital markets. Microfinance institutions, cooperatives and fintech players should play an increasingly important role. There are many examples of successful innovation. In Mexico, Infonavit has provided green low-income housing finance at scale for a decade. In East and West Africa, pay-as-you-go off-grid energy models have given 360 million people access to affordable solar lighting. So we have really very good stories. Technical assistance, financial support, and well-targeted subsidies can help build the supply-side response and scale up those interventions that offer the most impact for the underserved. And that was the supply side. But what about the demand side? 
one big part of the solution is to help people access finance in ways that take account of how they work, live, and use technology. In Mali and Uganda, for example, Oko Finance offers index-based insurance to smallholder farmers through their mobile phones using affordable and accessible USSD technology. So therefore, no smartphone or internet is needed and services are offered in local languages with an emphasis on clearly explaining product and service terms. In closing, I would like to suggest a call for action. For policymakers, to place financial inclusion at the core of the sustainability frameworks, ensuring households and small businesses are not left behind in broader system-wide efforts. For financial institutions, to innovate and scale up instruments like climate risk insurance and saving products, and to increase lending to small scale green initiatives. And for donors and technical partners to do more research on how households and small businesses cope with climate shocks and access green opportunities. This will help build the data and evidence needed to improve policy design. Above all, let us recognize this fundamental reality that there is no stability without inclusion and no sustainability finance without inclusive finance. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, Queen Maxima. And I would like to thank you for your uh, for being the champion. I witnessed it many times. Uh, I was vice president at the World Bank in charge of uh, digital development and infrastructure. And I was uh, so the, the role you play for access to ID to for the poorest. You've been a champion for ID4D, which is a, an important component of financial inclusion. And your role in uh, helping us in moving this agenda forward has been critical. So thank you very much for what you have done in the past and continue doing for financial inclusion. You can count really on IFC to be your partner, to work with you along those lines. And the word is so, so, so clear. Uh, it happens that yesterday I was at University of Chicago for the launch of the Development Innovation Lab led by uh, Professor Michael Kramer, who was a Nobel Prize in 2020. And uh, one of the point of discussion was exactly what you said. Uh, uh, Queen. It was about doing more research in that area. So you have been uh, very anticipating a lot of things that we plan to do. And uh, don't be surprised if we call on you to continue helping us move this agenda forward, because you are such a force to drive the agenda forward. And we thank you so much for your commitment. And you can count on IFC to be one of your very strong partner. Mr. Diop, it would be my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.